I want to take a quantum yeah. sideways leap, um, sort of, I guess, mm -hmm. and I want to ask Diane, who was it you called the devil in the American Book Review? Oh, yeah. John Hollander. <laughs> John Hollander. Yes, um, that's right. As, as I, do, you, do you like doing that? I'm sure that must have been calculated to get the kind of reaction that it certainly did. Well, I explained that it was, uh, I didn't call him, I was comparing him to Lucifer, the yes, fallen, he did call it, yes. and that, that he was someone who had uh, all the powers of extreme godliness who chose not to use them and was very, it seemed to me, fiendishly not using them in the particular occasion that I cited. Um, and I, I think he's even come to uh, be contrite about that. Since he is a brilliant man, I bring I just I bring that up as as a sort of a, how shall I put it a, a a rather blatant example of your opinionatedness. Since you certainly do, aren't shy of expressing your opinion of other poets, um, pros or cons, and I think that gains you a great deal of respect mm -hmm. as well as a great deal of, well, of disagreement. <laughs> I was right. writing an article about the state of American poetry, and I, I cited an occasion where a very prestigious man with a, a lot of power and a lot of reason to feel that the world loved him um, behaved in a very fiendish way um, because there is a kind of craziness in the world of poetry right now that makes even people in godly positions seem to fear. Um, uh, sh their shadows and um, Why do you the, the new. Uh, th this was the beginning of an article called "The New Conservative is in American Poetry," which I've now written oh, okay. a, th a third installment to, um, and I, I, I'm fascinated by the fact that we live in an intellectual establishment where the word conservative is a bad word, and even people who are conservative in every accurate and precise meaning of that word still want to be called um, liberals or somehow feel that it's a bad thing. And, and what I continually have as my subtext, uh, as we call it these days, is that it doesn't really matter to me whether you're right wing or left wing or what you are, um, but it seems to me the one thing you can't afford to be if you're an intellectual is dishonest about um, assessing your position, and and if it's necessary to look at it in a linear place, then it's you should see how how much of the past you're trying to preserve, and what ways you're trying to preserve it, and and how or how much of it you're trying to overthrow, and what about it you want to overthrow, and, and position yourself someplace where you can understand what that is. But um, it seems to me that, that people who know nothing about the history of poetry are pretending that they need to return to the sonnet as if there's some kind of return to form when they never knew what form was in the first place. Um, and and um, the, uh, the case of John Hollander was a man who was ridiculing free verse as if somehow it was an occasion for people to have orgies in universities. And certainly he's a man who knows better than that and, and sort of um, was, was behaving like a fallen angel, uh, catering to a strange version of dissatisfied academics in the audience who are happy to titter at his kind of dumb jokes about all the illiterate and um, practically unwashed and stupid poets as who were teaching in universities. It, I, I, it was I, an, a, I did bring that a up maddening for, occasion. I did bring that up for a reason. Yeah. Okay. Because I clearly you don't place yourself in the conservative vein. I mean that's that's fairly obvious. You you no, consider I'm a yourself mysterious from, creature. From the, I'm more the, Apollonian than Dionysian, <laughs> but I'm the person who is the champion of the Dionysian tradition. But I, it's because I am so Apollonian that I can see it so clearly and organize it so well and talk about it <laughs> so, <laughs> so concisely. Uh, I, I mean, the, the the irony is that someone like John Hollander feels envious of the so-called 
you know, unwashed like myself, when he teaches at Yale and he wins prizes and um, he has a kind of success that uh, we unwashed yeah. will never have. Well, there's su there's success and power, of course, yeah. which are two different issues. I was going to mention issues, power, yeah. Right? I mean, it sounds like... We're so well, he has far more power than certainly I will ever have. In, in, in his poetry, would you... Would you buy that one? <laughs> I mean, because that's really what the issue well, is. Well, his poetry is published by Johns Hopkins Press and has won more prizes than my poetry has ever won <laughs> and gets reviewed uh, in such places as the New York Times Book Review, which I suspect my selected poems will not. Mm -hmm. So, so um, you know, it, it's hard to say what he really is envious of. Mm -hmm. He's very Luciferian. Would, would you, Josie, consider mm -hmm. becoming a conservative writing sonnets? Are you calling science conservative? Uh, I'm using I'm using <laughs> Diane's definition. Oh, okay, yeah. Which is I'm just being so. I began um, my poetry life by writing sonnets, so it's you know. Well, yeah, I think a lot of people. I mean, it's what when I was taught poetry. I mean, I wasn't taught the way I would have liked to have been taught poetry. I was taught poetry um, of the 16th century, 17th century. You know, I was taught all that, and um, that's what I thought poetry was. But I liked it anyway, and um, I didn't realize that you could. I mean, anyway. I didn't realize that you could that that you know and I and I liked Poe for a long time and so I wrote like that and I thought that was the only way you could express yourself then I found out that there were people who were alive that wrote poetry and that there were different <laughs> things going on and you know oh what an amazing thing and so um, and oh and I could write in my own language which you know which is postmodernist 20th century American you know which is not right you know although you do have iams and troche and all that I mean you do have rhythm in language and meter but and in conversation and in the newspaper and all that but so, I mean, I'm traditional in the sense of I think the title should do something. I think the beginning should do something. I mean, I, I'm sort of in that sort of, you know, conservative. You're a, and, you're and a I new like, traditionalist I, well, what I like from is, the free verse. No, but what I do like, too, or what I really envy um, writers who can um, take a form like that and break it and can make it still adhere to the rules but yet sound like something else. I mean, I really admire that. I think that takes a special... Um, a special knowledge of the language almost to be able to do that. There's, um, oh, let's see, Tom, who wrote Spermatozoa? Um, I can't think of his name now. Tom Clark. Tom Clark, yes. Who, and that's a sonnet, and it's nothing like other sonnets, and it's, it, it breaks the form in a sense, and it, you know, it does it that by itself. For myself, I, I like to think that um, the form comes out of the content a little bit, but, um, you know, if I use repetition or something, uh, but, I admire people who can take the tradition and change it. But you don't really have any great no. need or desire to, to do that. I've tried Villanelle's um, even recently. Well, um, I don't. I don't mean in terms you know, of in terms of trying. I mean yeah. in terms of clearly there, to clearly it? there's a move back in in a lot of published poetry to traditional forms. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But even even if you look at like X J Kennedy, who's who's pretty conservative in his writing in that sense. He's, he still writes well. He still writes comparisons and metaphors. He still writes, you know, there, there are still things like that that work in that sense that are traditional things. I mean, I'm, in, I'm, I'm for the new, of course, I mean, because I want to see what's going to happen, more or less. But, um, but I don't see a need to, like, if you don't write sonnets, then you're not a real poet. I don't, I don't think that's valuable, you know, just to say that. It's kind of a nice mm -hmm. and interesting twist on, on the the great unwashed who feels a poem has to rhyme kind of thing, which we've, yeah. which we've gotten used But it doesn't mean that rhyme is, ter is totally terrible either. Of course not. You know, you can swing both both ways. I don't mean there are no standards, so. <laughs> it sounds like that, doesn't it? That's but not you, what I come, mean. you come from, a, from that precise tradition that John Hollander is basically mm -hmm. referring to. You are on the tail end of the traditional mm -hmm. teaching methods, and to you, free verse is, is as, as natural as rock and roll to a certain extent, right? I mean, it's it's not it would not be natural for you to write sonnets. It would not be but natural. I don't know. Given your background, yeah. But don't you find? I don't know if you find this on the internet, but I find that the more I try to be, you know, new or something, the more I find that I write traditionally. You know, when I look at forms and, and the subjects and things like that, do you find that? I think I think it's the an interesting. That, almost the more that I try to be experimental, the more I'm. You know, it, it, I mean, it, I, I mean, lately I'm looking at it that way. And you want to? I think I think that's an interesting kind of discussion because we have a lot of poets out there trying 
to do their own traditions, right? That's what we're talking about. Okay. And it's a matter of yeah. where you're placing yourself within the spectrum. You're pa you're we have Diane allying herself with a Dionysian, <laughs> right? Well, and we have uh, no, she's we have Josie. Well, probably more like Walt Whitman than Emily Dickinson, although. So. Don't you wish you could do Emily Dickinson? That's what I mean. Yeah, I guess that's what I think. Well, I don't think my poetry is that different from Emily Dickinson, but if I had to but say that I came from one yeah. line or the other, it's yeah. the Dionysus. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'd say the line we're from here is from Couplets, Michigan Poets on Poetry, here live from Buckham Alley Theater. <laughs>